here with sex and relationship expert Hillary Silver, and she's going to share some of the most common challenges couples face and her model for healthy, amazing relationships that last for the long haul. So I'm so excited to talk about this topic because I've been married for like, I think it's going on nine years this year and challenges always happen no matter how long you've been together. So it's really important to know how to handle those challenges. So first off, I'd like to know what are some of the most common challenges and we'll go from there. Well, I, I mean, relationships have their seasons and so it depends mm -hmm. where you are in your relationships in yes. the love life cycle is what I like to call it. Um, and couples that um, have young kids have pr specific challenges and yeah. couples that have been together for a long time have specific challenges. Um, but it always comes back to how both people are showing up in the relationship mm -hmm. um, and to it's really important that both people are full, whole, self-defining, yeah. self-determining, autonomous people so that one doesn't overpower the other. That's so huge. I don't even know, like that's one of the things that we've always talked about, making sure that we're always kind of in alignment with each other because it would be easy, you know, for us to kind of grow apart if we're not kind of paying attention to that. Where are you? Where are you? And asking that question constantly. Mm -hmm. So I feel like one of the biggest challenges we try to overcome constantly is just making sure we're always on the same pace and the same page. Mm -hmm. And making room for both people, Yeah. right? So what I like to say is make room for two. Every relationship yeah. needs to have room for two. And every relationship always has one person who's more dominant than the other by, by nature. That's mm -hmm. me in my relationship. I'm outspoken, opinionated. Uh -huh. I know what I want. I'm enthusiastic. And I can easily just kind of elbow him out because uh -huh. he's more easygoing or laid back and yeah. wants to me to be happy and doesn't want to rock the boat. So there's always one in each uh -huh. relationship who's a little bit more than the other. So it's really important to make sure that you're navigating right. that balance of power because when that's off, it affects everything in and out of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I bet that changes over time because as people, you know, mature, <clears throat> they kind of, ch their personalities kind of change. I know that I've gone through several different seasons in my life, let alone in my relationship. Right. And my behavioral patterns have <laughs> changed. So I might have been a little more easygoing earlier on. And now I think I've gotten, I've grown to be more outspoken and dominant, but still, you know, my husband's um, always the he's always been kind of more dominant than I am personality wise, mm -hmm. but I've kind of you've come into your up own. a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. And, and, a, and a healthy relationship will be flexible enough to uh -huh. accommodate you finding your full voice and uh -huh. being your full self. Yeah, yeah. So how do people in a relationship? And I feel like this is one that um, is really important to me. I so one of the things that I've personally valued, and I. I knew myself when I got into the relationship and I told my husband when we were dating, the most important thing to me is for me to feel like I'm being seen. And I even remember in the, um, the Beyonce film of her latest album, and she said that she talked about both in the relationship, do you see me, do you see me? You know, and that kind of being one of the challenges that she's dealt with in her um, relationship with her husband. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we consistently make sure that the other person feels seen and heard. Well, I think we all experience that differently. And so I feel seen and heard and loved and supported mm -hmm. when, and it's kind of goes to the love languages a little yeah. bit, but for me, if my husband's not doing the things around the house that I need him to do, I feel alone yeah. and I don't feel important to him. And I know for him, he really needs to spend a lot of time with me. So it's really about making sure that when you're asking for what you need, you're not making it vague. Uh -huh. You're not saying, I need you to see me. You're saying, yes. this is what I need from you so yes. that I feel seen. So okay. it's really important to ask for what you need and Be to clear. ask specifically. Yes. And even sometimes put a qualifier on it, like I need you to move your tennis bag now, <laughs> not tomorrow. <laughs> that will make me feel important to yes. you, right? So I think we just don't realize sometimes that we're not communicating as clearly yes. as we think we are, mm -hmm. and we miss each other. Okay. And then we don't feel important, and we don't feel loved, and then we get resentful, and that's where things really start to fall apart. Yeah, I was personally guilty of that specific <laughs> thing for a while because I would say, well, you never do the dishes. And he says, well, I do the dishes. And so I had, he, I, we had to come to the understanding that 
I need him to do it at a certain time. He said, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know you needed me to do it before the night ended. <laughs> I thought it was just oh my whenever. God, it's so much better when the dishes are done before you go to bed, right? <laughs> right, especially right after you eat. So you can relax, but everybody has, you know, nobody wants to be told what to do, uh -huh. but if we just make our wishes known yes. and we do it in a way that's clear, we also just want to make each other happy. That's all we really want. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say is the number one tip that you want to make sure that everyone in a relationship knows that will help them to survive for the long haul. Well, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier about room for two. Uh -huh. My model I call sunny side up because it's really instead of one, it, instead of concentric circles or one circle overlapping the other, uh -huh. it's two whole circles inside of a circle. Actually, I'll pull out my little. All right. <laughs> I brought a, this is what I, um, <laughs> This is, these are just from um, workshops that I give, so I don't know if you can ah. see it, but this is my model, and it represents the two whole, full, autonomous, self-defining people inside nice. of the relationship. Oh. And this is the boundary around you, and uh -huh. so there's always needs to be room for two. Yes. And when you, um, when you don't, like, well, what we don't want is this, <laughs> ah, okay. is one person is half in and half out. Okay. Um, and what we also don't want is this, What's that which one? is someone coming in. Oh. And that could be mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's always mother-in-law. <laughs> demanding bosses. Oh, um, yeah. Inappropriate members of the opposite sex. If you're a hetero couple, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so you know the old model that is still being shown and taught out there is this. Yeah. And this is just doesn't work because it never stays like this. Life is dynamic and one person al is always more dominant, dominant than the other. Uh -huh. And so what ends up happening is this. And I don't know if you can see because the colors are didn't print out very well. Uh -huh. But one overshadows the other. Okay. And the other acquiesces and submits and capitulates and withholds mm -hmm. to make the other happy or to keep the peace or to, you know, just to avoid conflict. Yes. And then that's when all things go wrong. That's when affairs happen, that's when divorce happens because yeah. people aren't feeling connected and they're both not getting their needs met. So my number one tip to have that is to really embrace conflict because you're gonna have more conflict and you're gonna need more communication skills okay. to achieve that state of two-ness so that you can navigate, well, I didn't get my needs met. Well, I'm not getting my needs met, so mm -hmm. who's, you know, you always get your way. Well, you, I feel like I always get you always get your way, and so it's really about having those foundational communication skills, right. so that you can achieve this. When that is off, everything starts to go wrong. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> well, thanks for the amazing yeah. tips on you know handling those challenges so that we can have amazing, amazing relationships. Thanks for having me. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>